In this video, let's talk about asynchronous endpoints. So imagine this is the service that runs all the time and listen to the port for the HTTP request to come in. And then there is this HTTP request that comes into the service to the port and the service picks up the HTTP request and tries to process the request. And after processing, after processing, it would then return this HTTP response back to the caller. Now the question comes, what, what happens when there is another request that comes into the service? Well, the service is still serving the first request. Does the second request need to wait until the service finish processing the first request in ASP.NET Core platform and the Web API application platform uh, application framework or MVC application framework. Well, remember the Web API application framework is based on the MVC application framework, or we can just say that they are the same thing. So, in the MVC application framework. There is this default, there is this thing that is called threat pool, right? So each time the service is attending the request, it takes a threat, right? So let's imagine that this circle is the threat. You actually have a pool of threads that are waiting to be used. So in this scenario, when the second request comes in, if we are still have threads available in the threat pool, so this is the threat pool. When there's threads available in the threat pool, this thread will be assigned to this request and try to process this request, right? And when that is done, then it will return back to the caller return a HTTP response back to the caller. So this is the default behavior. But imagine that we have another two requests came in, right? additional two requests that came in, then both of these threads will need to attend and serve the requests, right? And just so happen to be all of them happen to be long running. Now here comes a problem, right? So let me make it more realistic by deleting the request, right? So, so all of them are still being served. Now, the fifth request comes in, what happens then, right? Here is a scenario that we are concerned about. We need to deal with the asynchronous endpoints. So if we look at our endpoints right now, we can see that none of them are asynchronous. They're just regular methods. In this case, what happens is that when the fifth request comes in, it's trying to, it's going to look for another thread in the thread pool, but if it finds out that the thread pool is running out of thread. And in this case, the system is gonna create another thread, but creating thread causes resources. And it's a relatively slower process, right? So we need to avoid this scenario by making those action methods asynchronous. And let's use analogy to better understand this situation. Let's say that you walk into this restaurant, okay? This rectangle is a restaurant. And there is there are two waiters or waitress. Let's just say two waiters. All right, so waiter number one and waiter number two. There are two waiters and you're the customer who wants to order something. So you came in and then the waiter is gonna come over and ask you, what do you want to order? So you said, I, I, want, a, I want a noodle. So this person will go to the kitchen Let's say this is the kitchen. Okay, it's a kitchen. Okay, so 
the waiter uh, asking you what do you want you said i want noodle the waiter is going to go to the kitchen and place the order ask the chef to start cooking a noodle for you now here comes another customer so while this waiter is busy helping you this waiter is going to help the second customer right and then this waiter is going to go to the kitchen as well to place the order so that the chef or the chefs can start cooking for the customers so and this is similar to in our situation the restaurant is the service right the customers are the requests while the customer placing orders are the request but just kind of consider the customer customers are the request right and the waiters are the threats currently with with all of the methods as regular methods not asynchronous methods the waiter can only serve you until the food food is cooked and the waiter is then return the food bring the food to you and then the waiter is going to be ready to accept to help the next customer right that's the the problem that we're having right now so let's say that in this situation where all of the the waiters will have to wait then the problem comes when there's the third customer that comes right comes in no waiter is going to be available to help the third customer restaurant will have to hire another one and apparently that's going to take a long time to hire another waiter just to help the customer the customer might as well just go to a different restaurant this is just a metaphor and no restaurant run their service like this what they actually do is that so let's say there are two customers coming in at the same time the waiter is going to help to place the orders once the waiter goes to place the order in the kitchen the waiter will immediately be available waiting for the next customer to come in and then this waiter is going to help the customer and then place the order going back and wait for the next customer and before the next comes customer comes the dish that the first customer ordered the noodle is ready so then the waiter is going to bring the food to the customer then go back and wait for the next one right so this is asynchronous right it does not require the restaurant to hire another waiter just because a third customer comes in two waiters can help a lot of customers similarly if you make your action methods in web api asynchronous then threads will no longer need to wait until the endpoints or the action methods finishes processing the request the thread can immediately return back to the thread pool and wait for the next request to come only when the long running process within that action methods finishes processing that request does the thread comes back to help continue execute the rest of the action method note that the request comes back to continue helping may not be the original thread right similarly here in the kitchen the waiter that comes back to help the customer to deliver the food to the customer may not be the original waiter so let's jump into visual studio and turn all of our action methods into asynchronous methods so that we can help the application framework to avoid the situation where they have to create new threads right we need to reuse all of these threads as much as possible with Donna framework, it's not a very difficult task to make our action methods asynchronous. All we have to do is to use the async keyword and make this a task. Right? And here it's complaining, right? It's saying that you gotta do a wait. So where do we put the await? So we're putting the await keyword right here and then we need to instead of use the to list we need to use the to list async method like this right and 
What does this await mean? Let's go back to our analogy here. So this, when the first customer comes, okay, so let's bring this outside. But these two customers didn't come in yet. The first customer comes in and the waiter comes to help and the first customer. And the first comes customer plays the order, right? The, the, the waiter brings the order to the kitchen, but before he left, he said, please wait, right? He said, wait until I bring the food back, right? So then he brings the order to the kitchen and place the order there. And he goes over and is available to help other customers. Then, then he can attend the other customers while the food for the first customer is being cooked. So the important thing here is that the, this waiter said, wait, right? So that is similar to this await keyword here. This await keyword basically means that no matter how long this method runs, the, the application framework makes a mark inside here, right? This is actually supposed to be two lines, but uh, we put it in one line. The inside here, it makes a mark here says, we are waiting for this method to finish its work. If it takes 30 minutes, then as soon as this method finishes, then this thread or, or other threads in this thread pool will come to continue serve the get method, right? That is very similar to this is the waiter says, wait, Okay, and bring the order to the kitchen. And then that wait, it means that the customer needs to wait. And also the waiter is also waiting for the food to be cooked. And once the food is cooked, the waiter that is equivalent to the thread will continue finish serving the customer. And at that point, this waiter may not be the initial original waiter. It may be a different waiter, right? So that's using so i'm using this analogy to explain what a wait means now well, let's continue to make all of our methods awaitable asynchronous and awaitable so this one also has a async version and that's it and for our post make it async also a wait right here a wait right so uh this is a this is a good one. So this one, the await means that the ASP.NET Core is going to make a mark here. And then the thread will leave and return to the thread pool to help other requests, HTTP requests. But once the save changes async method returns, then a thread will be assigned to this method, the post method again, and it will continue running the next line executing the next line. In the meantime, there's a mark that is made here. And then the task is returned immediately, right? The task is returned immediately so that the threat can go back to the threat pool. But at the same time, there is a mark here. And once this method returns, another a threat will come to continue to help to work on the post method, right? So let's continue with the put method. I'm gonna make this async and for this one also putting the async await over here and delete one is also similar I'm gonna put the async here and we need to await for it to find the ticket uh we forgot to do, the, do this one this is what you need to do all right so we're looking for the ticket and we're waiting for this to return. And when it's returned, the ticket will have the ticket. And then we'll check the ticket. And and here, so if you notice here, this remove, it doesn't have a async version. Uh, that's because this remove doesn't actually fire the delete statement. It's this one that fires the delete statement. This one will need to take a long time. So this is only, uh, tells the change tracker that you're gonna need to mark this ticket as, as deleted. It's basically a operation in the in the memory. 
but this one does need to have this async method. That's because this one really goes to the database uh, to make a query. Of course, this one async. All right, so that's the ticket. And now here you can pause the video and apply the same thing to the project. I hope you have done this all by yourself, but I'm just going to quickly implement the same thing for the projects endpoints, the get method, get by ID method, find async, waiting for the find to return. And for this one here, uh, we need to change this to list to to list async. And the async method returns a task, right? So in order to actually take the tickets uh, collection back, we need to call, we need to have this await method, right? Waiting for it to return. The same thing that I explained before, and I'm gonna put work on the, the update and change this to async and let it wait. And last but not least, putting async await uh, on the delete method and then on the save changes, and we are done. With all these changes, let's give it a test. Let's do a control F5 and service started. Let's go to our Postman, and we shouldn't be able to tell any differences between the async and not async because we're a human. We can't tell how fast, like it goes really fast. So everything still works. We just need to make sure that everything still works. Uh, this one doesn't have the third. So let's take the first project. Uh, so we still have that, and we can still do all of the creating all of the projects. Now we should have three projects. Yes. And now we can update our project, um, update the, the first project, right? And update successfully completed. You can see that we updated it and we can delete the first project. And now we deleted the first project. Same thing with the tickets. Uh, we have three tickets and if we create a new ticket, then we have four tickets now. I'm going over here checking that we did create the, fir the fourth ticket and we're updating third ticket to make it the six. It says in the title, the six bug. And then we go to the get tickets query and we can see then which has the last one, which deleting the first ticket. Then we go to the, the get tickets endpoints and test it that we did delete it, the first ticket. So well, these are the manual tests. So we tested, at least we didn't break anything. But with the async and await implementation, we made all of the endpoints asynchronous. This would improve the performance of the endpoints. When the server is really busy, that's when you're gonna tell the differences.